Hello, uh, I'm Dave Ingerbretson. I'd like to, along with Leroy Hyatt, welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying, the Angler's Art. Uh, today we've got a good show for you, tying a variety of things. We're going to tie a classic eastern pattern, the light Cahill. Then we're going to tie the serendipity nymph and finish with a salmon steelhead pattern, the polywalk. We're going to start with the light Cahill, and maybe we should tell you a bit about the light Cahill first. Uh, this, as I said, is primarily an eastern, represents an eastern mm -hmm. mayfly, mm -hmm. but it's a good pattern anytime you have a light tannish, creamish fly anywhere it's in the country. It's a good attractor pattern. Uh, if you're using it in the east to match the hatch, uh, the natural insect usually comes off about the end of May, sometime around the 25th of May. Uh, the hatch, main part of the hatch will last about six weeks, mm -hmm. maybe start building a couple of weeks before that and carry on a couple of weeks after that. Comes out at a nice time in the evening. Uh, people like to get off work a little bit early and slip out, and have an early dinner, hatch. slip out and catch this evening hatch. You'll find the bugs rising, uh, the insects hatching over fairly fast water. Mm -hmm. And Just we're going like to tie, gonna tie this on about a size 14 hook. That's you? correct. I have a light wire dry, uh, dry fly hook in the vise. I already have the barb pinched down. Going over the material, I'll use a light ginger neck. I will use a cream dubbing material and we'll use the real wood duck lemon wood duck uh, feather for the wings I will also use this same hackle uh, for the hackling of the fly now I know that a lot of people may not have access to lemon wood no, duck. that's right that's what the original pattern called for yes. and real wood duck flank is beautiful stuff to tie with yes but what most people will probably want to do would be to use a dyed mallard flank feather correct dyed and yellow the natural feather is yep, gray and it's pale. dyed to a pale lemon yellow correct and uh, well, that's let's, what most people tie let's with. start with the fly Dave I'm, I have the hook in the vise I'm going to use a real light tan thread this time I'm going to just put a light dressing on the hook up front, and now I'm going to put the wing on. I want to strip this bottom section of it off where I have just that top. I'm going to tie it in so that the curved side is up. I'm going to pull off just a little bit more of that. Now, there's some variation here. If you have a big flank feather, some people will cut a little V out of the middle section, cut the and stem out. Yes. Uh, yes. I don't usually do that because the feathers, the fibers are so nice and segmented, uh -huh. uh, segregated, you don't have to. But. That's correct. Now what I've done, I've just tied it in. I'm going to just pull on that feather until it gets to be about the right height for that. I've let it go just a little bit too far. I'll push it back through. Now we might mention the uh, standard proportions. Uh, the wing probably is about as long as the shank of the hook. We want it to stand up. About correct. one fourth taller than the hackle. That's correct. And the hackle will be about one and a half times mm -hmm. the gap, the of, the gap hook. of the hook. But if you measure that wing along the shank of the hook, it'll probably work out just about mm -hmm. right. Now what I've done, I've I've stood that wing up. I'm going to divide it as evenly as I can, and just take a couple of figure eights through it. That's really all you need to do with this fly. It will hold very nicely. Another right there. little trick, if you have trouble, is to take a a horizontal figure eight over the top of the hook. That is a loop around each wing Correct. without going around the hook and yes. then adjust it. Uh -huh. Now you tied that wing in what, about a third of the way back from the eye? That's where I usually pretty put Pretty close, yeah. yeah, pretty close. I want to leave room to put some hackle up front there. We want to leave room for a head too. Yes. Now I'm going to take just a few fibers from again one of those light ginger hackles and that will become the tail. I want it to be about the length of the shank of the hook so I'll just measure it out there, then clip it off and cinch it down. I think it's fairly important with the Eastern style of tying. People, most people, not all people, but most people, myself included, like to have that tail running out parallel to the yes. shank of the hook. Yes. Some people will f put it up a little bit, and some will, some flare will put it down. down, and some will flare it a little bit. Yep. But I like it, I think the classic Catskill way probably, uh, to my understanding, is to have it in a tight bundle on mm -hmm. top and on parallel top. to the shank yes. of the hook. Now I'm putting the dubbing on and with this particular pattern it is a very light delicate pattern and you want this dubbing to be just as sparse as you can get it on the thread. Yeah. Uh, it's also good to use a nice light uh, thread. This happens to be a 10 -aught. Uh, a Probably an 8 aught would work the same. Mm -hmm. And that dubbing should work there. I always tell people to use the least amount of dubbing you can possibly get and then cut that in half. That, it's exactly. almost impossible That's to put what I was too little say. on there. 
you want a fuzzy thread. And it might say another word about the dubbing. You know, the original pattern called for fox fur. Uh -huh. uh, very specifically, the urine burned fur from the vixen female. fox. It Off had a little female. pinkish tinge to uh -huh. it. But the problem is, uh, well, one problem is uh, who's got any of the stuff. That's correct. And the other problem is fox fur is very coarse. And extremely difficult, uh, difficult to dub Difficult with. to dub with. Yes. I would much yes. prefer to use something like dyed rabbit, and then we blend it to the uh -huh. color we want or dye it to the uh -huh. color. But I would often put a little bit of pink in the blend. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you to have give a it that coloration. pinkish tinge, sure. ten, uh, tinge to it. Now, what I'm going to do, Dave, is I'm just going to start wrapping, and I'll go back over it just slightly to build that slight taper for well, this Well, that's fly. what you can do with the fine dubbing. With the, the fine thread. dubbing, yes, you if can. If you've got too much dubbing, you can't taper the body. And just finish that off right there. Got a little piece that's bald. Now, up if you there. don't have enough dubbing on there to, if it's so sparse you can't build the taper you want, just do just it again. Put Add some more on, more but don't it. build up bulk. You bet. Build up your taper with mm -hmm. a many more turns. Now, I have a couple of hackles here that I've already sized and laid down. I'll just get these tied in and we'll get ready to come forward with that. Stand that wing forward. Get a pair of hackle pliers around one. Sometimes with if you're using the longer saddle, you won't need to use those hackle pliers. I want to try to take the same number of wraps behind the wing as I will in front. I do want this wrapped a little bit on the heavy side for hackle. Well, I find that most eastern patterns are tied a little more delicately, but I still like to have the hackle dense mm -hmm. to help float it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Two, three turns behind, two, three in front, and then wind the other hackle through. Uh, it should do the trick where you get both the support and the delicacy. That's correct. Get that first one trimmed off. And now here we come with the second one. And I'm going to zigzag this hackle just slightly. What that will do is help where it will not capture some of the existing hackle that we put in with the first one. And when we do two hackles, I like to make the first turns of the second hackle behind the first hackle and the last and turns of the second in hackle front. in front. That's right. Yeah. I'll get that trimmed off. Get a whip tool out. And three or four turns, there's the head. Get rid of that. I've captured a couple of little fibers there. I'll just trim those off quick. Then we'll put just a drop of head cement on it. Pretty decent little fly, Dave. This one came out pretty good. It looks good. Oh, the light kale is hard to beat. And again, as I say, it's it's good in all parts of the country. Anytime you have to match a creamy tan Anytime mayfly. Anytime you need the attractor. And in a time. variety of sizes. Sure, sure. This happens to be a size 14. Yeah, that's what more closely represents the naturals. But uh, whatever you're trying to use it to match, you want to match that size. Well, there's a light Cahill. For the pattern again, we use the uh, cream dubbing for the body. We use the lemon wood duck for the wing. We use the light ginger for the hackle and the tail material. Well, next, Leroy, you're going to show me a fly that I'm not familiar with, a nymph called the serendipity. And you tell me it's a good all-around nymph for most any place. First time I saw the fly was in West Yellowstone with guys fishing on the Madison. A lot of times they'd use it for a dropper, mm -hmm. but it was a very effective fly. It can be tied in a lot of different colors. Tonight I've chosen brown. I'll go through the pad the material very quickly. What this is is a brown Zelon. It could be Antron. It could be any type of sparkle yarn in about any mm -hmm. color you wanted. Deer hair we use for the head. And I'm using a brown thread just to match the body color. Now, you showed me a picture of it, and it looked to me like it might represent a caddis pupa, maybe? Uh, that would be a good, yes, anything. And, and why the red works, I don't know, but I've seen some very bright red. Oh, with red bodies. Uh, I've seen red bodies. So you now can I really have, tie it in a variety of colors. Sure can. I have a standard bent nymph hook in the vise. Have a small piece of this antron cut off. Now, that'd be a hook like you'd use on tying a scud, for mm -hmm. example. A scud fly. I mm -hmm. suppose you could tie it on a straight hook, too. A straight hook. Have I it. have done it. I have used it on a straight hook. Now, I've just tied that antron in toward the front. I'm going down around the bend of the hook, and then I'm going to get my thread back up here in front. So you want it, if you can, to have a nice little curve. Yes. 
Yes, I'm down over the curve. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just twisting this Zelon. And as you wrap that then, what that's going to do is make a little segmented body. Oh. And it gives a very nice appearance with that Zelon or Antron or Sparkle Yarn, whatever you want to you wanna use. Uh, you can see that the fly is really starting to take a sheen. This body material is really getting very shiny as we go through. And I suppose for extra durability, you could coat that uh, hook shank with many head times cement I or do with, that, with a, that, uh, with rubber, a rubber based cement. Based cement. Mm -hmm. This one I did not do it. Uh, and probably the next one I tie, if I was sitting at home, mm -hmm. I would. But this particular one I didn't. Now, I've stopped a little ways here from the, the uh, eye of the hook. I first of all have to leave a head, and I have to put a little bit of this deer hair mm -hmm. on here. Now, do you ever weight that fly? Uh, no. I, uh, I've seen guys use them with split shot above it and uh, seem to do very well with it. Mm -hmm. I just have a small chunk of deer hair here. I'm going to trim the tips off. Don't really need them. Well, I suppose if you're putting a clipped deer hair head, then you'd fish it uh, fairly close to the surface that way. No, they'll, or in they'll the either surface. go down. It'll be in the surface, or yeah. they could go down deep. With or it. if you want to go deep with it, then you'd put on a split shot. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I've also seen it used as a dropper mm -hmm. for for with a big. Uh, well, it strikes me as a fly then that's quite versatile. Very versatile. Uh, very, it would certainly very be easy versatile. to fish in or just under mm -hmm. the film. Now I've got that deer hair spun on. I'm going to go ahead and just build a very small head here in front. Get my whip tool out, and two or three wraps. Pull it tight, and clip that off. Now what I'm going to do is just take the hook out of the vise and give it just a real quick little mm -hmm. trim job. And I'll trim it on an angle like this. They do leave a little bit of that deer hair sticking over the top for a wing. Uh -huh. Uh, I don't know that it would make that much difference. I've seen them both ways. Now, you mentioned that you can sometimes they fish that as a dropper mm -hmm. off a dry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. And and I've seen a lot of times for when the dropper, when it's fished as a dropper, they will tie a piece of leader material right on the bend of the, of the dry fly. Oh, yeah. And then come back and tie that short leader into the eye yeah. of this hook. That's gotten to be a... a Pretty oh, popular way of fishing yeah, a dropper. It doesn't tangle you know, nearly The old standard bad. way of sticking out a piece out from the side of yes. your tippet knot or something. Yes. Uh, I first learned about that from some guides in Montana, and that's pretty much their standard way. Again, to repeat that, they put their second tippet tied onto the bend of the hook of the uh, of forward the dry fly, fly. Mm -hmm. and then just to have 12 inches or whatever or they want, whatever. or sure. 24, 18 inches, whatever, for the dropper. Mm -hmm. uh, dangling straight behind and you're right it's it's much uh, less prone to tangling cast it very easily i really hate to fish droppers uh, any other way anymore. yes you're right i'll put this back in the vise that is the whole fly the only thing i need to do now is just put a little drop of head cement on it uh -huh. and it is a very effective a very nice segmented body well, i like the looks of the body and i like the looks of the zelon or the sparkle yarn whatever you're mm -hmm. using and uh the fact that you tie it in a variety of colors, I'll definitely give it oh, a I've shot. Oh, I've seen it red. I've seen it olive green. I was going to say olive. I think it, would be yes, good. Yeah. I've seen lots of different colors like that. And it's easy to tie. Very easy to tie. In fact, I spent more time trimming that head than I would have needed to. But that's the yeah, serendipity. But you're a professional. I'm yeah, right. <laughs> uh, there's the serendipity. This one is particular one is a brown body with a deer hair head. Well, Leroy, you're really doing it to me tonight because you didn't, you're going to show me a fly I know nothing about. Uh, it's one called the Polywog. Or Wog for short. And it's a steelhead salmon fly, you tell mm -hmm. me, and all I can see is it's very colorful <laughs> from the materials you've got spread out here, and I have no idea why they'd call it a Polywog. And why they call it? No, I don't know It doesn't look like any Polywog either, I ever saw, but tell, me, tell me about it. Okay, well, we'll use a pink crystal flash, very bright, colorful. This will be an undertail. We'll use a fluorescent pink uh, marabou, this will be the overtail. Then the whole body will be with spun uh, fluorescent pink deer hair. And I'm using a 6 aught black thread. I like to use that lighter thread. It binds into that hair a little better. Mm -hmm. 
In the vise, I've pinched a barb on this size two. It's a, a loop eye up salmon steelhead hook. Those loop eyes are nice because you get a finished eye and there's no chance of it cutting None. the thread or whatever. It will not come undone, yes. Oh, I like to tie on those. I'll run the thread all the way to the back of the hook, about over the point of the hook. And then I'm going to take just a very few strands of this crystal flash. You don't need a whole lot in there. I think sometimes people have a tendency to want to overdo that crystal flash material. Got a straggler there. I'll tie it in. And I like this tailing material to be about two inches long. Now, I've measured this on my vise, and I know about from here to here is about two inches. So I'll clip that off. Over the top of that, I want to take a whole marabou feather. Now, this is a blood marabou. You can mm -hmm. see the stem still in it. Mm -hmm. And I like to leave that stem in it because it makes the feather a lot more Why don't durable. you explain to people what you mean by the term blood marabou? Short. Uh, they're always only about four or five inches long, and they'll always still have the stem in it. You can see mm -hmm. the stem As opposed to one that has a stem going all the way through and the fibers correct. coming off the sides. It's, yes, yeah. correct. This way I can use the whole feather and, and the fly will last a whole lot longer. And I interrupted there, you said that's about the same length as the undertail? Same, same length as the undertail. Clip that off. Now I want to take one small section of deer hair. And that's deer body hair. Deer body. Just dyed. You don't see very many pink deer running around. Well, obviously it's dyed. You wouldn't be doing it off a live deer. That's true. Thank you. Just and this will go, this small section will go directly over that tail material. And what this will do, it just kind of becomes uh -huh. a third tail. But what it really does, it doesn't let the marabou lift up. It uh -huh. kind of keeps it bound down there. And now it's just a lot of repetitious spinning of deer hair and packing. You can coat start... that uh, no, not, not yet. your stuff? Not yet. I won't. I'll do it in a minute. Okay. I want to put a couple on here first. Now this one I'm going to let spin. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let it go right around the hook shank and back up just a little bit and come back up. I'm going to pull all this out of the way. Three or four wraps. Now I I'm think that's put... an important little trick you did uh, where you spin it, but then you take the thread backwards and forwards through it. And that really it helps all bind together. it down. Now I'll put a little bit of this rubber base right up there against uh -huh. where I just was. Most people, you know, just run that thread forward and they never go back. I and like I to do it because it, it really does much more bind secure body, it, yes, yeah. very much. Now I'll take another section of and this. And I've got to say, that's a trick I learned from you. Oh, thank you. Uh, doing you, were, show because you were paying I always, attention? I always just spun it forward. And okay. I actually do pay attention to what you say. I yeah, that's amazing, I oftentimes Dave. ignore it, but I pay attention to it. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't act on it. But. All right, back through it again. <laughs> I'm going to take a hair packer, and I'm just going to push this all together, get it just uh -huh. as tight together as I can, take three or four more wraps in front. You know, right. hair packers, there are a number of different types, oh, but lots they're really different. important, I think, to getting a good, tight body. And my body's improved considerably, my deer hair bodies, once I started really packing the hair with a packer. Yes, and you can do it with your thumbnails to a point, but it will not make it as tight as this will at all. Three or four more wraps in front. It's, a, it's kind of a lot of repetitious spinning. You know, people often complain that they have trouble with clipped deer hair bodies mm -hmm. and uh, I think for me the thing that really made the difference is starting to use a packer. Oh really? Yeah. Because I just was getting it a little more compressed than mm -hmm. I was before mm -hmm. and it made it so much more uniform when I started the trimming process. Yes, absolutely. So and I would makes, recommend it. Uh, it makes it easier to trim too because the hair's tighter oh, together. Yeah. Well, and when you get into the fancy stuff, you know, doing banded stripes mm -hmm, and spots mm -hmm. and get into bass things, and uh, it's much easier to control it once it's tightly packed. That's right. So I would suggest that uh, the viewers uh, try out different packers, find something that they like that works for them, or make their own. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people do that. Now, I'll put a whip finish in this. I'll just go ahead and do oh, this with my hand. Oh, look at that with my hand. Now, there's a man after yeah. my own heart. You don't rely on that tool. Okay. <laughs> now, I'll take this out of the vise. Now, if I were going to be doing a lot of these, I would have a straight-edge razor blade and trim this belly flat. Now, when you do that, 
which way do you run the razor blade? Back towards the bend back or up toward towards the, the bend. eye? I go back toward the bend. Okay. But you have to be extremely careful doing that because if you get into it too deep, uh, you'll cut the thread yeah. and that fly will come yeah. apart. Uh, I occasionally use a razor blade, but I, I've never known which, I haven't figured out yet which is the best well, way to go backwards or forwards. To but, me, that's that's the best uh, way to go. Well, I think it is because you, you can get in under the bend sure. of the hook. If you're sure. trying to go the other way, now, it depends on the pattern. What I've done, I've made the belly flat, which is going to open up that hook gap. Now I'm going to come in and do the same thing on the top. Mm -hmm. What this fly is really going to look like when it's all done is kind of like a little stingray. Uh huh. I see. And uh, you're going to put a delta wing kind of. No, well, the whole thing's going to turn around. All right. Now I'm going to just start trimming down the edges. So with all this deer hair, this fly is probably made to fish uh, right kind of top. just on top or right just under on the surface top. film. Yeah. Uh, would then I'll you turn it around. Put some fly dressing on the uh, deer hair part. I'm or, sure or they could, or just go natural if you yeah. want. Uh, well, it wouldn't sink very deep no, here regardless. No. You probably want it under a little bit to get some action out of that marabou. And there's kind of the basic shape. Now, the trouble with deer hair, any fly with deer hair you tie, you never know when to quit trimming. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to just start and go around. I'm just going to make a little circle oh. with my scissors. And sometimes a, one of those pair of curved scissors will uh -huh. make this go uh -huh. a little quicker. That really looks uh, looks like it's taking shape nicely now. It's starting. It's yeah. starting. And you know, when I first looked at this fly, and I'll be truthful with you, I have not used it. I have tied hundreds of these things for people. But it looks like as you cast it, it should just twist your leader terribly. <laughs> but uh, well, that's certainly the people that use them tell me, no, it does not. Yeah. It, it does very well. Well, I imagine when they're fishing... Uh, you know, for fish of that size, they're using, and they're using stout leader. larger yeah. leaders. Sure, they, they would are. spin a you fine bet. leader, but probably not a heavy one. I'll just keep flattening this out here on top. Now, you were just telling me some friends just returned from Alaska, and they just were catching uh, silvers, silvers mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. And and it's not always pink that they use on these too. I've tied them purple. I've tied them all black. Ah, I've nasty. tried them with with stripes in them. Uh, uh -huh. Boy, some of these guys get pretty exotic with what they want. But uh, Well, I think the main thing is you get it up on top and you get some action and it'll excite the fish. And, and it does crazy things some days on top the, of the water. I suppose depending on the sunlight and that sure, different colors. Sure. Uh, purple sounds good to me. Oh, purple I think is always good for a salmon yeah. or a steelhead. Yeah. yeah but I that's the basic fly, Dave. I'll put it back in the vise and uh, get a little drop of head cement on it. And that fly will really be ready to go fishing. Looks good. Well, thank you Just for showing it to me. Well, you're more than welcome. Well, uh, now, you will promise you'll go try one. Well, the next time I go fishing all in right. Alaska for uh, silvers or something, okay. I will. There's Pollywog, tied with all pink. It's got a pink marabou tail, pink crystal flash, and spun pink deer hair and trimmed to shape. Well, that's it for today, folks. We've tied a dry fly, a nymph, and a steelhead salmon fly, the light Cahill, the serendipity, and the polywog. And uh, we hope you've learned a few things along the way, and we hope you'll do some fly tying this next week, and uh, maybe even go out and do a little fishing. Thanks a lot, and good night. Dave and Leroy have produced a new 90-minute video on fly tying techniques. To order a copy, call the number on your screen. These tips are only $28.95 plus $3.95 shipping and handling. Please have your credit card ready and call 1-800-883-0124 to order fly tying techniques. You can also order the programs in this series. There are three programs on each 90-minute tape for $22.95 plus shipping and handling. Call 1-800-883-0124 and order your fly tying videos or the techniques tape.